going to show you how to, when I say we, I am going to show you how to really get much better with your theory test as well, okay? The app I'm using is the Driving Test Success 4-in-1 Theory Kit. You can get it um, off the App Store or the Play Store. The link it will be in the, is in my TikTok bio and also in the description on YouTube as well. So if you click on that link, it will take you straight through to download this app and it is, in my opinion, the best app that is out there, okay? It costs less than five pounds. You pay only once and that is it. You can use it forever and ever and ever. I bought this app six, seven years ago, probably longer than that actually. And I've only paid that, uh, you know, under the fiver once and we're all good. So a lot of people really struggle uh, we're doing the theory tests uh, because they they do one of several things. They'll either rush it, they'll try to memorize the questions, they're trying to do it too quickly, they'll think they're under a time limit. Uh, well, you technically are, but you get 57 minutes to do it. So we're going to have a look at this theory test, okay? If I just quick look in the mock test thing here, you've got 57 minutes to answer 50 questions. That's a lot of time. Even if you spend one minute on a question, you're still good for time, yeah? Some of the questions are going to be so easy that you, you can, you'll think, oh, I know this one. Five seconds, you've answered that question. Done. Yeah? Really, really easy. But what you need to do is take your time. Re um, you know, uh, read the question properly. Read the question properly, yeah? Um, and so on. Right. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm just going to uh, block a couple of people. There we go. <clears throat> okay. Right. So. We're going to do the practice revision questions. Okay, You can do the 50 questions, but we're going to do 20 questions as well, uh, as we normally do. And with that 20 questions, we can actually do a full breakdown, okay? So with this category here, sorry, with the option I've just chose, you can choose whichever particular category you want to choose. So if you sort of like think you're not very good in incidents, accidents, emergencies, you can probably just sort of like click on that one and then click start and do 20, 30, 40, 50 questions, or all of them if you wanted to, okay? So that's the good thing about this app. You can choose which category you want to do. So if you click start and then you've got the option here to do it however many questions, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, or all like I said, we're going to stick with 20 as we always do. And then this is it. Okay. So as always, guys, you are going to choose A, B, C, or D. All right. If you've got any questions uh, that is relevant to that question that we're seeing on the screen, um, then please ask. Uh, on the screen and I will actually answer them, okay? Uh, I am live on two platforms right now, on TikTok and also on YouTube as well. This this is going to be going onto YouTube and so you can actually re-watch it again however many times. If you look on my YouTube channel, go under the live section, you can see many more of these actual videos that I've done on there as well, okay? So we do a full breakdown of the questions and the answers as well, yeah? Okay, guys, right, let's start this off. So I'm going to click start. And have a drink of water. Right. Question number one. <clears throat> what should you do if you've been followed by an ambulance showing flashing blue lights? Really easy to one, this one, okay? So let's think, what is the flashing blue lights? What does it mean? Okay, so is it A, brake harshly and stop well out into the road? Pull over as soon as it's safe to do so? Maintain your speed and course or accelerate hard to get away from it? All right, now I can see in pretty much all of you uh, over on TikTok saying B, there's a couple of people saying C, which is just silly. Um, uh, Mihai Tudor, hi, says hi, Baz, over on YouTube. Hello to Mihai, how are you? Um, okay, let's look at the um, all the answers brake harshly and stop well out into the road. Why would you want to brake harsh? You've got an emergency vehicle behind you when the flashing blue lights are on, you know they, they need to get somewhere quickly, yeah. So, ideally, you want to get out their way as soon as it's safe to do so, okay. So, you don't want to brake harsh, they're going to rear end you. Not good. Option B, pull over as soon as it's safe to do so. That makes the most uh, common sense and the safest answer, yes? Maintain your speed and course. Well, no, you want to get out of the way. This emergency vehicle wants to get past you. If it's safe, move out of the way and let them pass. Accelerate hard to get away from it. Why would you want to do that as well? That doesn't make sense. Yeah? Unless you're an emergency vehicle, yeah? Is blue light ambulance? Just me asking. Uh, blue light is the emergency services. Ambulance can use it. Police and the fire brigade. <clears throat> yeah. So three emergency services can use blue lights. So we know the answer in this one is pull over as soon as it is safe to do so. Break the question down. Break the answers down. And then think which is the most common sense answer and the safest option out the, out the four options that you got there. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, question number two, what's the purpose of triangular shaped signs? So remember, when you kind of look at uh, like a sh uh, the signs, you look at the shape, color, and content. 
So what does the triangle shape mean? Is it to give directions, to give information, to give warnings, or is it to give you an order? <clears throat> right, I can see lots of people on the screen saying C is to give warnings. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, so C uh, is the correct answer. A triangle is a hazard warning sign. Okay, uh, a circle sign is your order. The directions um, would be probably on a, on a square sign or something. Uh, what's the information? Oh, sorry, on a square sign. Uh, directions could be on a, on a oblong sign like a one-way street or keep left or turn left or whatever else, okay? So, yeah, different shapes have different meanings as well, okay? Matt is saying, what about an upside-down triangle? Uh, that Oh, actually, a good question. Good question. What is an upside-down triangle, guys? So I'm going to let you answer that question. So we've got the triangle the correct way around here. But what if you see a triangle, upside down triangle? What does that mean? Does anybody know what an upside down triangle means? I'm trying to look for the sign. I'm trying to look for it um, in 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 my flashcards. I'm trying to look for that particular sign in my flashcards. Matt has put me on on the spot here now. I can't find it. <laughs> oh no! I'm gonna try to find it. Okay, a lot of you on the screen are saying giveaway. Absolutely correct. It is the giveaway sign. Yeah. Uh, or yeah. So if you see an upside down triangle and it's covered in snow, you notice a giveaway sign straight away. Easy. That's why it's uh, different shapes uh, or different orientation as well. Yeah, excellent. All of you saying giveaway uh, is brilliant. Uh, okay, right. So uh, let me just click on the give the correct one. A lot of you said, see, the purpose of the triangle sign is to give you a warning. It has a warning. Excellent. <clears throat> okay, question three, guys. What should you do while you're driving or riding along a motorway? What should you do while you're driving or riding along a motorway, okay? Is it maintain a shorter separation distance than you would on other roads? Travel much faster than you would on other roads? Concentrate more than you would on other roads? Or look much further ahead than you would do on other roads? A, B, C, or D? A, B, C, or D. Now, I can see quite a lot of you saying D. There's some Bs coming through. A lot of people are saying C. Some are said, said C. Uh, Dylan saying D, Rehan saying D, T Tegan D, Jesse saying D, Summer saying C, Nikki saying D, Ibrahim is saying D, uh, Mast is saying D, Zargo is saying D. Right, most of you are actually saying D. Much look much further ahead than you would do on other roads. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Okay. So remember, you're on a motorway. So what's the fastest speed you're allowed to do in the UK on a motorway? What is the fastest speed you're allowed to do? Let's have those answers on your screen right now, guys. What's the fastest speed you're allowed to do? <coughs> yep, it's 70. Yep. 70 mile an hour is the fastest speed that you're allowed to do. <coughs> now, on a normal road, you're probably going to be driving at 30 or 40 mile an hour, yes? So, when you're driving faster, i.e. at 70 mile an hour, it's always good practice to look much further ahead than you would do on that 30 or even 40 mile an hour, or 40 mile an hour road, okay? Why? because you're traveling faster. You need to look a lot further up the road to see what's happening up there. Is anybody braking? Is the traffic coming to a stop very quickly? Yeah, um, are any vehicles in the left or the, or the right lanes trying to move into your lane? Are they trying to overtake somebody? You're gonna look at all eventualities, look at everything that's coming up and happening, yeah? So let's look at answer A. Maintain a shorter separated distance than you would on other roads. No, because that's quite dangerous. Remember, again, you're going faster speed-wise. If you're going to be driving much closer to that vehicle in front of you, then, and remember, you're doing 70 mile an hour. If this guy breaks, you're hitting the back of that car. So you actually have to keep a much, much, much further distance away than you would do on a normal road, okay? Because you're driving faster. You need more braking ability, more braking time. <clears throat> travel much faster than you would than you would do on other roads well yeah you can get up to 70 so that would kind of like make sense concentrate more than you would on other roads well yeah you would have to in any case yeah but ideally uh just look much further ahead than you would do on other roads yeah lgg saying come on mate just tell us mate i'm teaching you you know how to actually um work out the answers yeah i'm not just going to give you the answer yeah um so i reckon uh oh. Might just give you a little present there. There it is. <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah, so look much further. If you're not sure, you can actually click on that hint button, okay? Traffic on motorways usually travels faster than other roads. You need to be more, uh, you need to be looking further ahead to give yourself more time to react to any hazards that may develop exactly what I just said. So if you're not sure on this, on this, uh, this app, you can actually use that hint and it's really, really, really good. So yep, I got it right. 
D is the correct answer. Yeah, I'm hoping most of you got D on that as well. Okay, question four is, where will you see these red and white markers? Where would you see these red and white markers? Is it approaching the end of a motorway? Approaching the end of a dual carriageway? Approaching a concealed level crossing? Or approaching a concealed speed limit sign? A, B, C, or D, guys, what do you reckon it is? Uh, thanks for all the roses. Who is, who's sending all these roses? I don't know who it is, actually. I can't, I can't see a name. Uh, somebody sent 20 rows, but much appreciate. Thank you very much. That's very nice of you. <coughs> okay, Harry is saying C. Uh, some are saying C. Are you just saying C? You're pretty much all saying C, aren't you? Yeah, excellent gentleman saying C as well. Let's grab a drink of water. <coughs> yeah, so C is correct answer. Approaching a concealed level crossing. Um, bit of a silly question, guys, but what's concealed mean? What is a concealed level crossing? Hussein sent arrows in his Arabic uh, name. Okay, hidden name. Okay, hidden, yeah. Yeah, concealed means hidden. So um, you're probably coming around a corner, around a bend or something. That's why they're in that colour. Yeah, in that colour. Because normally, when you see countdown mark, mark, markers, they'll be, um, well, not with a red border. Uh, sorry, not on a white background with red stripes there. Yeah. Concealed, yeah. Concealed, somebody says, what's concealed? Concealed means hidden. Hidden or, you know, not visible, like somebody says. It's more mainly hidden. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, approaching the end of a motorway, no, that'll be blue signs. Approach the end of a dual carriageway, there'll be green background. Uh, level crossing, yep. A concealed one, white background with red stripes. Approaching a concealed speed limit sign, no. A speed limit signs are not concealed. Yeah, so it is, C is the correct answer. Well done. Okay, question five. You are following a slower moving vehicle. What should you do if there's a junction just ahead on the right? <clears throat> Pick out the keywords in that question as well, guys, okay? You're following a slow moving vehicle. Uh, accelerate quickly to overtake just before reaching the junction. Overtake after checking your mirrors and signal uh, or signaling, so I say. Slow down and prepare to overtake on the left or only consider overtaking when you're past the junction. A, B, C, or D. Which is the safest option here? So let's look at the keywords in the question. You're following a slower moving vehicle. Slower moving vehicle. What should you do if there's a junction just ahead on the right hand side? Okay, you're moving a slight. So you, obviously you kind of like want to overtake, okay? So now a lot of you are actually saying D, only consider overtaking when you're past the junction. Yeah, that will make the safe, safest option, okay? Let's look at A, accelerate quickly to overtake before reaching the junction. That could be quite dangerous. What if a car comes out of that junction on the right and turns into your road and you're overtaking the slow moving vehicle? You're probably going to have a head-on crash, aren't you? Yeah? Um, overtake after checking your mirrors and signaling. Um, well, that you're going to have to do that in any case, but you have to be aware that there's a junction coming up ahead on the right-hand side. Slow down and prepare to overtake on the left. That's not a safe thing to do. So we know C is not a good answer, yeah? C is not a good answer. So is A. A is not a good answer either. So uh, it's either going to be B or D or both. <laughs> Yeah, only consider overtaking when you're past the junction would make sense. And lot of, lot, most of you are actually saying D in any case, yeah? I'm going to sneeze any second, guys. So <laughs> excuse me if I just burst out sneezing. Let me just hold my nose for a second. Okay, question six. What should you do before slowing down or stopping your vehicle? Flash your headlights, use the mirrors, select a higher gear or sound your horn. This one's actually really easy. This is one of those questions that will take you five seconds, 10 seconds to get the answer correct, yeah? What should you do uh, before slowing down or stopping your vehicle? <clears throat> um, a lot of you saying B, use your mirrors. Yeah, it makes sense in the air. You always use your mirrors before you slow down, always, okay? Check your sense of mirror, see how close the vehicle is behind you. If they're really close, start braking a little bit earlier. Control the vehicle behind you so they don't smack into the back of your car. And always brake nice and early if that is the case, yeah? Always brake nice and early. So you got the answer correct. Flash your headlights. It's not, you don't use that before you slow down. Select a higher gear. No, use your, use your mirrors and then brake. Sound your horn. Well, what for? Who are you going to alert? So yeah, B is the correct answer. Well done, guys. Well done. Okay, now, as always, if you're liking how I'm explaining uh, the questions and the answers, how I'm breaking it all down, making it all make sense, then click the follow button just there next to my name. If you're over on YouTube, uh, click the subscribe button as well. Watch all my other videos on this channel as well. Uh, and if you're on YouTube right now, 
be feel free to click over later on. I will send you the link to my YouTube channel. Um, follow, uh, subscribe onto that YouTube channel and watch these videos back as well. I think this is the 10th live video I'm doing with the, with the questions as well. So there's eight or nine other ones. You can watch them all. There's 20 questions in each. And I'm doing the same, breaking it all down, breaking them down, okay? Uh, yeah, you can click on the hint as well. Uh, Shamela is saying as well. You can click the hint if you really want to. Okay, question seven. What does this traffic sign mean? One-way traffic only. Give priority to oncoming vehicle. Oncoming traffic, sorry. No overtaking allowed or two-way traffic. A, B, C, or D. Baby son, hello to you. Uh, hi, Grace, over on YouTube. Hope you guys are all well. Ruby says B, all are saying B. Uh, some are saying B. Fiona, Jesse, Shirley, Kunchi, Usman, uh, your Porsche, you're all saying B. Yeah. Uh, a couple of people have just said D, actually. I can see a couple of people say D. Yep. Yeah. It is give priority to oncoming traffic and it's in a circle, remember? It's an order. Yeah. Uh, and you can tell you have to give priority to oncoming vehicle because the, the, the arrow fake coming towards you is bigger than your arrow. Yeah, that's you coming up that way. That's oncoming vehicles. Your arrow is smaller than theirs. You have to stop and wait for the oncoming vehicles. Easy, easy, easy. <clears throat> okay, question eight. You're carrying two 13-year-old children and their parents in your car. Who is responsible for seeing that the children wear seat belts? This one's easy. I expect every single one of you to get this, guys. Is it the front passenger seat, the children's parents, you the driver, or the children? A, B, C, or D? Jesse's saying C, pretty much all of you saying C, actually. Matty's also said C. <clears throat> yeah, uh, Temi's just said B, though. The children's parents, no, nope, no, nope, it's not the children's parents that are responsible. It is always the driver's responsibility. Dylan, hi, welcome back. It is always the driver's responsibility. Yeah, Grace over on you should be saying C as well. Excellent, well done. Nice that you've changed your name now, Grace. I can read it, <laughs> but I remembered, Grace. I remember this time who you were. Okay, well done, guys. It is C, you the driver. Question number nine. <clears throat> You're the first person to arrive at an incident where people are badly injured. You've switched on your hazard warning lights and checked all engines are stopped. What else should you do? Okay, move the people who are injured clear of their vehicles. Try and get people... Sorry, yeah, try and get people who are injured to drink something. Stop other cars and ask for drivers for help or make sure that an ambulance has been called, which is the safest option, which makes more common sense in, in this situation. Pick out the keywords in that question again. You're the first person to arrive at an incident where people are badly injured. Badly injured, okay? Think about that. How will that affect anything in your next decisions? You switch on your hazard warning lights and check all the engines on switched off. What else should you do? So remember, you're the first person to arrive at the accident where people are badly injured. What's the next thing you want to do? Yep, the first thing you want to do really is call the police, ambulance. Yeah, call the uh, uh, emergency services, notify them. Because remember, you're the first person on scene. Yeah? Uh, let's look at the answers. Move the people who are injured. Clear the vehicles. No, don't touch them. They are badly injured. Do not move them. Do not touch them. Yeah, reassure them, help them if you can, the best you can, but do not move them. That is not a good idea. Remember, they are badly injured. You don't know. If you move them, you might do them so much more injury. Yeah, so it's not, not safe to do that. Try and get people who are injured to drink something. Again, no, leave it. Don't, if, don't give them anything to eat. Don't give them anything to drink. Uh, you don't know what internal injuries they actually have. Yeah, stop other cars and ask the drivers for help. Well, that will actually eventually happen anyway. But the first, what else should you do? The first thing you should do is really make sure that an ambulance has been called. Most of you on the screen are saying D anyway, which is brilliant. Excellent. <clears throat> okay, question number 10. You're driving towards a zebra crossing. What should you do if a person in a wheelchair is waiting to cross? Yeah? Uh, is it continue on your way? Wave to the person to cross. Be prepared to stop or wave to the person to wait. You're driving towards a zebra crossing. What should you do if the person in a wheelchair is waiting to cross? Now, think what is, the, what is the law when you're coming up to a zebra crossing when it comes to somebody is waiting to cross, whether the person is in a wheelchair or they're not. It doesn't really matter, yeah? What is the law and what is the safest option? I can see pretty much all of you saying C, which is be prepared to stop. It makes sense, yeah? They ult Pedestrians ultimately have the right of way. That person in, in the wheel wheelchair could easily just start moving. Yeah, and you don't want to um, keep on going. You don't want it. You need to stop. Yeah, just me saying C makes common sense. C for common sense. There we go. Absolutely right. Yeah. Uh, is that the Harrison? 
just Harrison? Um, no, it's not. Uh, sorry, I thought you was the Harrison that um, I was teaching and the passes driving test today. Uh, but that's not the Harrison that I'm just looking at. Just Harrison. Uh, you've got a lot more followers than uh, the other Harrison now. But welcome. Welcome to the live and thanks for following. <coughs> um, OK, let's look at the other options. Continue on your way. No, you approaching a zebra crossing. You've got to stop. Yeah. Wave to the person to cross. No, don't wave them to cross. Do not wave them to cross because they might not have looked the other way to see what's coming the opposite direction. If you wave somebody to cross, they might start to cross and they get run over by an oncoming car. Yeah. Um, wave to the person. Oh, hang on a second. No, no, no. I don't want to do that. Ah, right, there I am. I don't know when I clicked that. I must, I must have clicked that one there. Okay, wave to the person to wait. No, if you wave to the person to wait, they might think you're waving them to cross the road. I keep pressing that button. It's, it shocks me every single time I do it. I've got to stop doing that. Stop doing that even, yeah? Yeah, so if you were to uh, wave to the person to wait, it might they might think you're waving them to cross the road, yeah? So just don't wave at all. Let that person... Waiting, make their own safe decision. Yeah, so we know. Yeah, be prepared to stop. C is the correct answer, guys. This this app is the four in one theory app. Uh, the link is in my TikTok bio, and it also it'll be on my um, uh, in the des description uh, over on YouTube as well. Okay, let's click on to question eleven. You must uh, sorry. What must you check before you drive someone else's vehicle? What must you check before you drive somebody else's vehicle? Is it that the insurance documents are in the vehicle? That the vehicle is insured for your use? That the vehicle owner has third party insurance cover or that your own vehicle has insurance cover? A, B, C or D. What must you check before you drive someone else's vehicle? I can see a lot of people saying B. There it is. Sometimes this pencil doesn't really work very well. Uh, yeah, pretty much all he's saying uh, B, actually. There's a couple of Ds. DK John is saying D, that your own vehicle has insurance cover. No, not necessarily in this case. Um, yeah, a lot of you saying B, actually. Uh, they have fully cop insurance and your policy allows. What is it? And so do you. And their policy allows. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Remember, um, we've, got, we've got weird insurance in, in this country, really. It's kind of like you're insured with the car, uh, whereas in a lot, a lot of other countries, the whole car is insured and everybody can actually drive it uh, and, and so on. I think our insurance our insurance needs to be reevaluated and done it in a better way. Uh, someone's asking for a hint. Yeah, let's click on the hint. <clears throat> Driving a vehicle without insurance cover is illegal, so be sure that whoever's car you drive, you're insured, whether on their policy or your own. If you need to take out insurance, it's worth comparing several quotes before you decide which insurance, pro insurance provider best meets your needs, yeah? Uh, so, whoever's car you're driving, you're insured whether on their policy or, or on your own. Now, let's look at the options. Uh, the insurance documents on the vehicle, that doesn't matter. That the vehicle is insured for your use, yeah, that one will make sense. A lot of you are saying B in any way. Uh, that the vehicle owner has third party insurance cover that won't that won't cover you most likely will not cover you that your own vehicle has insurance cover uh yeah but if your own vehicle has insurance cover um then you've got to make sure that you are covered to drive other vehicles as well that's the that's the main thing you have to be make sure that your own insurance cover allows you to drive other vehicles because it's not always does is that true yeah a lot of insurance companies will not cover you to drive other cars, put it that way. So B in this instance would be uh, the correct answer. Yeah, make sure uh, that the vehicle is insured for you to drive your use. Okay, <clears throat> what can you expect if you dry, drive using rapid acceleration and heavy braking? What can you expect if you drive using rapid acceleration and heavy braking? Like accelerating, braking hard, accelerating, braking hard, if you're doing that really quickly, okay? Uh, increased fuel consumption, increased road safety, reduced exhaust emissions, or reduced pollution. A, B, C, or D. Why are you, why are you guessing? I'm going to have a drink of water. All this talking makes this thirsty work. Well, right, I'll let you saying A. <coughs> dun, dun. Simply Terrell is saying A. Jesse's saying A. 
Uh, Oasis saying A as well. You're pretty much all saying A. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. If you if you accelerate hard, you're gonna use more fuel. Same thing if you're braking hard as well. It actually overall uses a little bit more fuel than gentle braking or gentle accelerator. So yeah, it will increase your fuel consumption. It's not a safe way to drive as well. Actually, it's not on these city streets. Don't want to do that when kids are around, grannies around, and whatever else. Uh, it's gonna be very, very, very dangerous. All right. So yeah, A is the correct answer. Increase road safety? No, it doesn't increase it. It decreases it. it, makes it more dangerous. Reduces exhaust emissions? No, it increases exhaust emissions and it increases pollution as well. So we know A is the correct answer and it is it increases your fuel consumption. Question 13, guys. You're on a country road that has no pavement. What should you anticipate finding on your side of the road? Is it horse riders, motorcycles, pedestrians or bicycles? You're on a country road that has no pavement what should you anticipate finding on your side of the road now i can pretty much see most of you are actually saying c which is pedestrians absolutely remember the clue in the in this in this question was there's no pavement yeah so pedestrians cannot walk on the pavement because there's not a pavement there so you're going to expect them to be on your side of the road and uh the highway code book does suggest that if you're walking on a country road with no pavement you should walk uh facing uh facing the oncoming traffic yeah, facing oncoming traffic. So if you're driving this way up this road, you should be walking this way towards the facing cars. Yeah, cars coming towards. So you can actually see them. They can see you very well as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. C is the correct answer. Question 14. What color are the reflective studs between the hard shoulder and the left hand lane of a motorway? What color are the reflective studs between the hard shoulder and the left-hand lane of a motor. And I'm expecting most of you to get this one wrong. <laughs> All right, is it white, amber, red, or green? A, B, C, or D? A, B, C, or D? Do daughter is saying A, Porsche is saying C, uh, Dylan is saying green, uh, Porsche is saying red, Priscilla is saying C, which is red. Uh, most of you, oh, well, it's actually saying red, I think Scotty, oh, I don't know what you said there. Mer is saying red, Oasis is saying red, uh, Zara is saying red as well, Nasir is saying D, green, no. Uh, Hamar Preet Singh is saying red. What are reflective studs? They're the studs you get on the motorways that all otherwise known as cat's eyes. Yeah, they used to be called cat's eyes back in the day. Okay, now we're getting lots of mixed questions and mixed answers on here. So let's actually do another quick breakdown on this one. Okay, so I am going to uh, just open up Google. I should actually, what I should do is just say this as a picture, actually, because I know this is a common one. Uh, uh, UK motorway studs. Here we go. Let's actually have a look at what we get. Let's look at this picture just here. Can I open that a bit bigger? No, what's happening here? Something's going wrong here. Images. And then let's open up that one. There you go. That's better. That's better. Okay, right. So let's look at these stud pictures. That's the motorway. So he's asking what colour the reflective stars between the hard shoulder, which is here, and your lane. And they are red. Most of you were actually saying red. I know a lot of you saying I'm, I get confused with this. That's absolutely fine. Let's go. Let's break it down in a bit more. Okay. So green is only when you're going to, going into a slip lane, whether you're coming onto the motorway or coming off the motorway up the slip road here. This is a slip road, a slip lane. Okay. So you're going to have your green reflective stars. Green is for go. Same as your traffic lights. Your red is don't go over this line on the left because obviously there's no carriageway there, okay? On the right side, you're going to have amber. And in between the lanes, you always have white. So at night time, by looking at the colours of the studs, you know which lane you're in. If you see a red studs on your left and a white on your right, you're in the left-hand lane. If you see two white studs on either side of your car, you're in the middle lane. If you see white studs on your left-hand side, amber studs on your right side, you're in the right lane. Easy way to tell at night time when it's not lit very well. Yeah. And then as we mentioned, the green means you can go up that into a slip lane or even uh, join the carriage lane. Easy way. Easy way. Uh, just me said any tips how to remember. Just listen to what I've just explained to you. That's the best way. Treat it like a, a, a traffic light system. Yes. All right, guys. Well done. Easy, easy, easy. So that's the easiest way to do it. Now, uh, so most of you said red. Let's go with red. Let's go with C, because that is the correct answer. I'm just going to just redo my cameras. There we go. Um, 
Let me just read the question because somebody said amber on there and there's someone saying why. What color reflects those between the hard shoulder and the left hand lane of the motor? No, it's red, isn't it? Hard shoulder and left hand lane is red. I don't know why people are still saying white and yellow. I'm just giving you the answer. <laughs> Unless I'm going crazy. I think I'm going crazy. Okay, question number 15, guys, is on a road where trams operate, which vehicles will be most at risk from the tram rails? Is it lorries, buses, cars? or cycles, A, B, C, or D. Which vehicle will be most at risk from the tram rails? Right, right most of you are saying D. Um, a couple of people are saying Cs. <clears throat> okay, why D? Why is D the correct answer? Cycles. Why are cycles the most at risk from the tram rails? Does anybody know the answer to that? So it's also about, not, not just about answering the correct question, but it's understanding why, why that is. Nora says, hard to see. It, Jay says, it's cars. No, it's not cars. Which vehicle is at most at risk? Uh, country's got the right answer. Yeah. The tram rails, they could be slippery when wet. Yeah. Lorries are not going to slide. They're not going to slip on the tram rails, the tram tracks, okay, because the tyres are wide. Buses, same thing. Cars, Pretty much same thing. They're not going to slide on those tram rails, but cycles will. Anybody that rides a cycle on, on the roads here at the moment, even if you've not got trams, uh, tram rails in your city, um, what would happen if you'd ride your bike over um, the drain covers? Or have you ever walked on the path on over a drain cover? The drain cover, not the drain hole, the drain cover when it's been wet. You slide on it, you slip on it, don't you? You, you? you don't have traction on your on your trainers or your shoes, you slip. So, same with cycles on tram rails when it's wet. Does it make sense? Understand the question, that's what you've got to do. So C, sorry, D, cycles is the correct answer. Most of you are saying D anyway, which is actually great. Well done. Uh, so guys, if you're liking it, make sure you're following over here on TikTok and also subscribing over on YouTube as well. There's many, many, many more of these type of videos to come. <clears throat> We're on the last uh, four or five questions, five questions. Okay, question 16. What should you do if your trailer starts to swerve or snake? Your trail on the back of your car. Is it brake firmly, steer sharply, increase your speed, or reduce speed gently? A, B, C, or D. Welcome back, Evan. Uh, Jay's just an ease off. Uh, Lolly's saying D. Yeah. Uh, Grace is just giving us an upside down uh, smiley face. Grace doesn't know. Come on, Grace. Uh, Hamal is saying uh, reduce. Charlie's asking, what's this app? This is the driving test success four in one theory app. Or the theory kit, the link is in my TikTok bio under the link tree link, or over on YouTube, it'll be in my description as well. Yeah, you're pretty much all saying reduce your speed gently, okay? So if your trailer behind your car is starting to swerve like this, you don't brake firmly. Yeah, that trailer is going to smack into the back of the car. Steer sharply, that's really dangerous. Never steer sharply when you're towing something. Uh, and imagine, it, the only time it will start to swerve a snake is when you're up at speed when you're doing 50, 60, 70 mile an hour. Well, you shouldn't be doing 70 because you've got a train in the back of your car. 60 is maximally allowed on a 70 road. Increase your speed, again, dangerous. So it's reduce your speed gently. Maybe just don't break, maybe just ease off the gas pedal. Let the car slow down. The trailer should actually stop snaking or, or, or you know, swerving. Yeah? Okay, good. Question 17. What would be affected if you carry a very heavy load on your vehicle? What would be affected if you carry a very heavy load on your vehicle, guys? Is it the vehicle's gearbox, the vehicle's handling, the vehicle's ventilation, or the vehicle's battery? A, B, C, or D? Again, this is actually really easy. Lot, really easy. Alicia is saying B for Baz. Summer saying A. Queen is saying B. Nura is saying B. Shelly is saying B. Remy is saying B. Grace is saying A. On here, the vehicle's gearbox. Grace over on YouTube. Uh, Jesse saying B is the handling. Yeah, the handling is going to be affected, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it's not going to, well, it's going to affect your gearbox a, a, a tiny bit. Ventilation? No. Vehicle's battery? Probably not really. But yeah, the, 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 the answer actually is the vehicle's handling. Yeah, it, the handling is going to be affected. Okay. Uh, because you've got more weight on it, more weight on your car. Yeah. Okay. Question. Did I get the correct one? I did, yeah. Okay, question number 18. Why should you allow extra room while overtaking a motorcyclist on a windy day? 
Okay, uh, what should you, sorry, why should you have extra room while overtaking a motorcyclist on a windy day? Is it the rider may turn off suddenly to get out of the wind? The rider may be traveling faster than normal. The rider may be blown in front of you or the rider may stop suddenly. A, B, C or D. Everybody's saying C, the rider may be blown in front of you. If it's a really windy day, it does say, you know, it's a windy day, you know, a motorcyclist or even a cyclist, the wind's going to catch and they're going to do that in there, yes? And if you're driving down that road, if it, I mean, to pretend my, actually, I'm just going to use this battery as our cyclist, okay? If, you, if you're going to drive past a cyclist, it's windy, the, wind, the cyclist is probably going to do this. Your car will do that a little bit, but a cyclist even more so. There's a big chance a cyclist might actually ride into your path. Yeah, so you've got to be very careful in your car when you're overtaking a, a, a cyclist. I was just about to say overtaking a battery because that's what I'm looking at. <laughs> overtaking a cyclist. I need to buy a little cyclist toy, don't I? So I can actually explain that one better. Hopefully, yeah, that all makes sense anyway, doesn't it, guys? Yeah, uh, yeah. So C is a correct answer. Be more careful. Give them a bit more room. Question number 19 is how would underinflated tires affect your vehicle? Underinflated tires, yeah? Is it the flash rate? Of the vehicle's indicators would increase. Wow. Uh, the vehicle's gear change mechanism would become stiff. Uh, the vehicle's handle, sorry, headlights would aim high. Or the vehicle's stopping distance would increase. A, B, C, or D. So this is saying to you, what if your tyres were, you know, had less air pressure in them? They're not inflated up the correct value. They're underinflated. Evan is saying A. <laughs> Evan, behave yourself. Uh, a lot of you saying D, aren't you? Most of you saying D. Uh, the vehicle stopping distance would increase. Absolutely correct. So it's really important that your your tires inflated correctly. Also, guys, um, now that the weather is getting colder, your air pressures in your tires will be less. So what you want to do is pump them up, get them back up to their level they should be. Um, as uh, as recommended in your manufacturer's guide, uh, or there might be a sticker in your fuel cap on your door, on your door frame, uh, or the door sill, uh, and then get them pumped back up, okay? So that, you know, and take your tire pressures when the tires are cold as well. Don't forget the spare. Uh, just me saying 1.6, that's the minimum tire, tr tr tire tread depth. That's your tread depth. So the guys that are saying 1.6 millimeters, we're not talking about tri tire tread depth. We're talking about the air pressure that's inside your tires, inside, yeah? So that your tires are inflated correctly, yeah? Uh, increases your fuel, um, your, sorry, you know, uh, your stopping distance, increase your stopping distance as well. And it could increase your fuel consumption if you're not, if they're uh, under inflated. Okay, last question, guys. <clears throat> you arrive at an incident. There's no danger from fire or further collisions and the emergency services have been called. What's your first priority when attending to an unconscious motorcyclist? Remember that keyword, unconscious motorcyclist. What should you do? Check whether they have any bruising. Check whether they're breathing normally. Check whether they have any broken bones or check whether they're bleeding. Uh, Aisha is saying B for ball. Remy is saying B as well. Uh, Alicia is saying B for Baz, uh, DK, DK Johnny is saying B, KJV is saying B, Emzo is saying B, Oasis is saying B, uh, Lottie is saying B, Hamal is saying B, Bobby is saying B as well. Yeah, let's see what B is. Check whether they're breathing normally. That would make most common sense, okay? Um, check whether they have any bruising. Well, to check if they've got any bruising, you're going to have to take off their clothing, and that might not be safe, remember? Uh, they've been in a collision, in an accident. They're a motorcyclist. They might have some broken bones that you cannot see. Another thing, guys, is do not take their helmet off. Don't touch them. Leave them as they are. They are unconscious as well. So if you do move them, you're not going to hear if they're any kind of pain or anything like that, yeah? So don't ever touch them. Don't move them. Uh, check with the breathing on it. That makes sense. Check whether they have any broken bones. Again, you don't know because they're unconscious. That's not your job. Let the paramedics, the emergency services, let them do that, yeah? Uh, check whether they're bleeding. Uh, again, you'd have, to, you'd have to remove any of their protective clothing, which is probably might not be a safe option to leave it alone. Wait for the emergency services to arrive. That makes sense. Okay, so B, sorry. Check whether they're breathing normally would make more common sense, okay? So I'm going to flag this one, guys. So that's all 20 questions done. So if I click next or finish... And I can already see people on the screen who say plant time. There it is. There's the little plant. You can look at this little plant while we work out what scores we got. So now, what score do you think we got? Do you think we got 20 out of 20? Or did we get less? 
Evan says, I got pulled and searched by Belgian police yesterday. I won't even ask what you were doing there. <laughs> Evan, no idea. We'll chat about that in a second, actually. Uh, once we finish the uh, YouTube live, let's not go into that uh, detail. <clears throat> okay, right. So if I click no on here, and I reckon we've got 20. Easy, we've got 20. Of course we've got 20. Of course we've got 20. Uh, we're not going to get anything less. Why? Because I broke the questions down. I broke all the answers down, and that's what you've got to do. Guys, this is how you get a very high score. Break the question down. Take your time. Take your time doing this, yeah? We've done 20 questions with a breakdown, and it's taken me just 30, 39 minutes. That's what YouTube is saying, 39 minutes, okay? I could do. Obviously, we can do that much quicker, but because I'm breaking the questions down and really explaining things, it does take a little bit longer. But look, this is what you need to do. You've got 57 minutes on your mock test to do 50 questions. Spend one minute on each question. Really think about which is the most common sense answer, yeah? Um, so you don't want to memorize it. You want to understand the questions and the answers, yeah? understand them all so there you go that's how we do yeah <clears throat> all right any questions guys any questions no point reviewing we know we've got every single one correct all right in fact what i'm going to do guys now i'm just going to uh end the live over on youtube stay on if you're on tiktok stay along uh if you're over on youtube uh feel free to jump on to tiktok as well in a second so thanks guys watching on youtube uh making sure you're subscribing liking the videos as well and share it to your friends leave a comment as well leaving any questions over on the in the comment section i really 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 appreciate that as well uh click out um check out all the other other videos I've done on my YouTube section as well. Click onto the live section. There's many more of these uh, as a possession of videos that you can watch um, and learn from as well. Watch them over and over and over again. You'll get better and better and better. Thanks, guys. Uh, see you on the next video. Right, one second. Uh...